All right. What's up, Jose? Thanks for jumping on, brother. Welcome everybody on Instagram and on uh, Facebook Live. Hey, bro, got a good message uh, planned this evening. Uh, we'll talk about faith. Despite our challenges, despite what we go through, life happens. And uh, so I hope you can stay on, man. It'll bless you. Just gonna start here as people uh, jump on. So, uh, hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Looks like we're doing good on uh, Instagram. People are jumping on. It's good. I'm going to move this over slightly. All right, everybody. Hey, welcome. Thanks for uh, being on. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, appreciate you uh, jumping on. Uh, again, my eyes will be moving back and forth because I have my phone actually this time right around here below uh, the uh, camera on the computer. So welcome. Good evening. Thanks for uh, being here with me. I appreciate you uh, jumping on. I uh, see I got like seven, eight people jumped on. Appreciate it. Hi, Eleanor. Welcome. Alomio family. Love you guys. And... Uh, Thank you so much for your prayers, your thoughts, and uh, thank you, thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> all right, everybody on uh, on Instagram, welcome, hello, thanks for being here. Hi, Marsha, welcome. Sorry, they're coming a little late. Ernie, welcome. Hey, everybody, thanks for popping on here. Appreciate you. Thank you for being here early. It's uh, 7.02 and um, I appreciate you all being here. I have a great message planned for you tonight. Uh, something that, excuse me, that the Lord has been uh, obviously working in and through me uh, through this season right now that we are, are going through as a family, you know, with uh, loss of my father-in-law. And, uh, you know, it's it's been a tough season. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, we are encouraged and we are um as, as james said you know consider it pure joy when you're going through all kinds of trials and persecutions and uh this is definitely you know uh, a trial uh, nonetheless it's uh, it's something that you know life you know we're all going to go through in life with uh family friends and obviously loved ones and um life you know is obviously fragile life is temporary it's temporal here on earth uh, but the next life is eternal and so i thank you all again uh, so much for again just reaching out thank you for uh, praying for us thank you for your support and uh we're just we're so grateful for every single one of you uh, hey mr cervantes i see you there thanks for uh, jumping on man appreciate you thanks for waving at me on instagram uh, again, so uh, would you pray with me, please? And if you can, uh, hit that share button. I believe that uh, this message or any message can bless somebody out there. So uh, if you can start a watch party, if you're on uh, on uh, Facebook or if you're on Instagram, I appreciate you. If you can uh, somehow, you know, tag people and let them jump on and say, hey, you know, we're about to get started on a message, um, you know, this evening, midweek service at the well. All right, so let's pray. All right, let's join me and let's pray. Uh, God, uh, thank you so much for today. Uh, Lord, we invite you into this conversation. We invite you into this meeting, this time, this space. Uh, Lord, we know that there's people that are jumping on right now that are struggling. Whether they're struggling in their relationships, uh, maybe struggling financially, uh, struggling emotionally, mentally, you know, with thoughts, Lord, that are not of yours. You know, the enemy may be attacking with depression, with anxiety, with stress, with um, maybe in suicidal tendencies and thoughts. And so, God, we come against all that. But, Lord, we uh, bring all these thoughts and concerns to your feet right now, Lord Jesus. Um, we know that you hear us. We know that you, uh, again, love us. 
and you want us to seek you first seek your kingdom your righteousness and everything else will be added on to us as matthew 6 33 says and so lord we seek you tonight god i pray for everyone that's jumping on here and is having a season of prosperity a season of you know just uh, peace a season of man things are going great and we thank you for those seasons as well and we thank you for those people that you surround us with that edify us that um let us borrow their faith that god that through our journeys that we can help one another out as uh the book in corinthians tells us that you're the god of all comfort and uh, that you comfort us and then when we get to comfort others because you've comforted us it's a comfort that comes from an overflow of love and compassion and empathy and so god thank you for good seasons for uh, in different seasons for challenging seasons that uh, help us grow that help us to mature into the christ likeness into the image of your son and lord uh may you continue to teach us more about ourselves when we go through the good the bad and the indifferent and that we continue to cling on to you and uh, seek your face above all else and uh, god we so again we come on bended knee metaphorically and some of us actually probably physically doing it right now uh, asking you for forgiveness asking you for comfort for peace uh, asking you for a financial blessing asking you for uh, just whatever we need all of our needs and we know that you'll respond at the right at the right time you're never late you're never early your timing is perfect and god so we love you bless us this evening and god use me i'm your i'm just your vessel uh, may your Holy Spirit speak through me tonight. And I pray that this blesses uh, multiple people out there. And God, so help us to silence all the noises out there, the distractions in our minds and even on our phones, uh, just to shut out all that stuff, even background noise, and just focus here tonight uh, that, we, that we can get knowledge, get out of our ignorance. And Lord, uh, give us peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me see some amens out there if you're with me. Some uh, hearts on on uh, right here on Instagram. Please help me out. Let me know that you're out there. I see people joining on. Uh, Lanisa, welcome. Thanks for joining. Laura, hey, thank you for being on, Laura. Uh, Taz man out there. Look at that, Mr. Cervantes. Thanks for the hearts, brother. I appreciate you being on. Alan, hope you're still on, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for waving, buddy. Uh, God bless you. Sheila, thank you for the amen. There it is. Amen, amen. All right. Hey, listen. Uh, turn, if you have your Bibles, please. If you have uh, the Bible app to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. That's in the, uh, the New Testament. You got Matthew, Mark, Luke. Uh, that's the third synoptic gospel, uh, which is, I call them the biographies of Jesus Christ. And we're going to read from the physician today. Uh, not the great physician, that's Jesus, but another physician, and that is Luke. Uh, Luke wrote this book, and he also wrote the book of Acts, which is a first century church. Um, you know, after Jesus had ascended uh, into heaven and uh, passed, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the apostles were, <laughs> were blessed with the Holy Spirit, and, um, you know, it rained on them uh, like fire. And they were speaking in tongues and doing miraculous things. Um, and the first century church took off. Amen. All right. Hey, Vanessa, still at work. Cool. Atta girl. <laughs> well, I'm going to go work right now. We're going to go to work. Pray, you know, go to work with the Bible here. So uh, maybe you can hear us in the background. So anyways, um, Luke chapter 8. Uh, we're going to look at verses 40 through 56. Okay. So I'm going to put that in here. Luke 8. Uh, I think I put it in there somewhere. Luke chapter 8, okay? Verses 40 through 56, y'all. Um, just to give you a little bit of background or where we're, where we're at in this, uh, in, in the gospel of Luke, is Jesus just healed a man that had a legion. This, uh, this, these demons called themselves a legion because there were tons of them inside of this man that uh, basically were ripping him apart. He was uh, naked and chained up uh cast it you know uh near a herd of pigs and uh jesus basically expelled this legion 
they knew who Jesus was. It's always interesting that when you reread the scriptures, we see that, you know, demons that had infiltrated people's bodies, taken over them. Every time they were around Jesus, they knew who he was. They knew that he was the son of God. And they would say that to him. And they would say, what do you want with us, Jesus? We know who you are. Isn't that powerful? That even demons know who Jesus is. I mean, can I get some hearts, some likes out there? I mean, that's how powerful God is, is that pe that these demons even know. Um, and what's crazy is that people, people, not demons, people don't even know who Jesus is. That's crazy. It's mind-boggling that even demons know who Jesus is. All right. And so now we're here in uh, verse 40. Jesus is going to heal a bleeding woman. And uh, he restores this girl uh, back to life. Okay. So if you're with me, let's read. Uh, now... When Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him. Now, welcomed him from where? Well, the disciples along with Jesus had crossed uh, the Sea of Galilee, and uh, they were actually now in a uh, Gentile region when he healed this guy that had demons uh, inside of him, and then he casted these demons out into a herd of pigs. And so um, he left that Gentile region and came back um, you know, uh, there was a bunch of Greek cities and uh, uh, the location was called De Decapolis. And so Jesus came back and they knew that Jesus was coming back and th there was a crowd there waiting for him. And so this is where we're at. So now Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him. We're in verse 40. For they were all expecting him. Verse 41. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader. Now I'll, I'll explain why that's important came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl about 12 years old, was dying. So Jairus is a synagogue leader. And what's interesting about that is that a synagogue leader, uh, that person was responsible for the administration of the synagogue, of the church, if you will, uh, the building maintenance, and also the, the worship supervision. So this was a, uh, think of a pastor of a church, right? A, a lead pastor, senior pastor like myself of the well. And uh, so this person is obviously someone that's prominent, someone that is quote unquote important. And this person sees Jesus. Now remember, th there's people around, there's crowds of people that probably obviously visited that synagogue and would hear the word of God at that synagogue and knew this synagogue leader, Jairus, but now they see this synagogue leader, this pastor, if you will, uh, prostrate and at his, you know, basically on his bended knees, you know, asking Jesus to come and help his dying daughter. And so that's, that's awkward and weird for people to see because remember at that point, Jesus was in many people's eyes, he wasn't yet in their eyes, the Messiah or the Christ, he was just a preacher, a street preacher, if you will, that was out preaching, you know, obviously, you know, the good news that he was the Christ, that he had come to save people and he's doing miracles and he's healing people and raising people from the dead and the blind would see, the deaf would hear, the mute would speak, the, the people that were sick were healed. And so let's continue reading. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. Can you imagine the, the amount of crowds that were waiting for him? I mean, they almost crushed him. Now, I wrote something down about that. Uh, I wanted to pause there real quick and talk to you about that. You know, the crowds almost crushed Jesus. I want you all to know that there's a difference there's a difference between crowds or people that are curious, right? They were curious about what Jesus was going to do because they heard rumors or they actually saw him, like I mentioned uh, just a little while ago, the miracles that he was doing. And so maybe they were out there just kind of being nosy, you know, being curious about, oh, you know, the next person he was going to heal or the next leper, you know, that was going to, you know, be instantly healed and the skin would be pure and uh, maybe he was going to, you know, uh, heal somebody that could not see, you know, instantly. 
I mean, you name it. So there's, there's curious people about Jesus. But I want you to know that there's only a few, and just like we're going to read right now, there's only a few that reach out to touch him. And so the point is, is that many people, maybe you, you may be familiar with Jesus. You're familiar of who, you know, who Jesus is, but nothing in your life maybe has changed and, 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 or bettered. Nothing has changed or bettered because Jesus, unfortunately, is just an acquaintance to you. I mean, you know of him, but you really don't have a relationship with him yet. And so I want to challenge you and encourage you as we walk through this to maybe put yourself in the shoes of these people that are in the crowd, that are that are interested, that are curious. And it's okay to be curious, but you have to move from curiosity. You have to move from being curious to reaching out to Jesus to have a relationship with him. Because if not, you're going to be lost in the crowd. Okay? And Jesus will not know you because you won't, you haven't formed a relationship with him. You have to reach out to Jesus. All right, so let's continue. And a woman, verse 43, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now, do you remember how old the girl was? <laughs> the girl was 12 years old. Jairus' daughter, his only daughter, if you read a couple verses right above that, it said that the daughter was 12 years old. And what's interesting is that this woman had, a, had an illness and she was bleeding for 12 years. So it's an illness. It wasn't that she was on her menstrual period, right? Which uh, Jews considered women unclean back then, that they wouldn't even uh, talk to them when they were unclean. They wouldn't touch them. They obviously, whoever was married, wouldn't be intimate. Uh, you know, they wouldn't even look at them because they, they you know, uh, the book of Leviticus gave a lot of, a lot of laws, a lot of rules, I would say, uh, so a person wouldn't become unclean. And so let's continue reading. But no one could heal her. She came up behind him, behind who? Behind Jesus, and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. And verse 45, who touched me? Jesus asked. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, now remember, these crowds were pushing up against him, and, and there was tons of people that were walking along as Jairus was walking Jesus to his house to go help his daughter who was dying to heal her. Now, imagine that. Picture that. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever, or maybe right now, have you ever prayed and, and you prayed for something and, and you were waiting for an answer, whatever that prayer is, think about that. Maybe it was to heal somebody. Uh, maybe it was for a job promotion, um, a financial blessing. Maybe it was a prayer for someone else that you prayed for that, that needed healing, that needed uh, a, a, a good test result. I don't know, whatever it is. Maybe let's focus on something that you wanted. And you prayed, and instead of you receiving that blessing, that prayer answer, somebody that you know, whether at work or you know somebody that posted on Facebook, received that blessing instead of you. Has that ever happened to you? Come on, I need I need to see some likes and some hearts out there. If you're on if you're on uh, if you're on Instagram, let me see those those hearts pop up. If that's ever happened to you, that. And on Facebook also, let me see those hearts and likes. Let me see, yes, that's happened to me, posted there. The question is this. You've been praying for something, for a blessing, for a miracle. And instead of you receiving it, somebody else that you know, or maybe don't know, but saw on Facebook, they, they received it. For example, let me give you an example. You know, we, uh, you know we, we haven't been owners of a home in a very long time. You know, we've moved around from location to location. Uh, ministry has taken us to different places from Santa Cruz Valley, Valencia, you know, up to Fresno, from Fresno back down, you know, to, um, to Valencia and then from Valencia to, uh, you know, to Palmdale now here in the Antelope Valley. Yes. I see those hearts and some likes. Yes. Awesome. 
And so we haven't bought a home yet. I say yet, but it's been our prayer. And we've been like, God, you know, bless us, you know, help us buy a house. But these last, specifically these last uh, two to three years, you know, we, we've seen a lot of friends. We've seen a lot of people, you know, being blessed, you know, with buying homes and, and, you know, buying a second home, a vacation home or doing this and that. And, and I confess, you know, it's kind of a little thing inside of you where you go, oh, like, I can't believe that. Like, God, aren't you listening to my prayers? <laughs> right. Uh, Paulina, you know what I'm talking about, right? Or, you know, you've been praying for, you know, you know, for, for a blessing, right? For your family to grow, for a baby. You've been praying for, man, you know, just God do this in our lives. And, and you make this deal, this vow or you know, uh, you go to the extent of fasting and praying, whatever it is, and and, and you're there and, and you see, it feels like people are running this race with you, right? There's competition, but they're so far ahead of you in advance that, that they're they're re receiving all the quote unquote blessings that, that you're praying for, but God has not answered you yet. And I want you to know that this is, this is how, you know, Jairus is feeling right now. Now, remember, he came and found Jesus. He found him and, and, and knew who to go to, though. That's key number one. Remember that. Jairus knew who to go to. And that's important. He knew that he couldn't go to anybody else. And this was a synagogue leader. Don't forget that. This is a pastor. And he knew who could answer his prayer. And it was Jesus alone. But yet on the way, listen to this, on the way in desperation of knowing that his only daughter, his only baby was going to die. Jesus is overwhelmed by all of these crowds. And I guarantee you, I mean, the Bible doesn't tell us this, but I, I'm, a, I'm a father of six. Let me put that in there. Six. <laughs> Not one, but by the grace of God, I got six kids. And I know that if one of them was ill and was going to die, I mean, I would be begging God. And if he was physically, which I know he is here, you know, spiritually with me, but if he, if, if Jesus was here physically, man, I would go find him anywhere. Like most people go find, you know, great physicians for brain surgeries, for back surgeries, for you name it, right? Specialty uh, surgeries. You go find the best doctors, the best surgeons, you know, to help you out. Well, Jairus went to find Jesus, but on the way there, he's overwhelmed and the crowds are suffocating him and holding him back. Instead of rushing to Jairus' home, now Jesus is stopped. And there's a woman there that didn't stop him, but she reached out. Listen to me. Don't miss this. She reaches out in through the crowds and makes her way through the crowds to touch Jesus. And Jesus says, someone touched me. I know that the power has gone out for me. That is verse 46. Jesus said, someone has touched me. I know the power has gone out for me. Right? Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling at his feet, fell at his feet, prostrate, right? Head down. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. So she felt the power of Jesus go through her body. She instantly, the bleeding stopped. And as this happened, Jesus felt this and he stopped. And through that crowd, he was like, wait a minute, who touched me? Who touched me? Because I felt the power come out of me. Now, let me give you another point why that's important. I firmly believe that Jesus, the reason why he paused and he stopped, knowing that there was a sense of urgency anyways to go and help this girl out, but he's God. Come on, everybody. Don't forget this is Jesus. Jesus' timing is perfect. Can I get an amen? Jesus is never late and he's never early. He's always on time and there's always a purpose. Here's what I'm learning through my faith and as I'm maturing and growing you know, in Christ every single day and every single month, every single year is that God is never late. God is never early. He's always on time. 
And their second, the second, the third thing I would say is there's a purpose always on why God allows things to happen and why things happen. So keep this in mind. So the reason why Jesus stopped and needed to speak to this woman was because he needed her to know that it wasn't some magical power that Jesus, that Jesus' cloak, in other words, the outside garment that he was wearing, that that didn't have magical power and that's what healed her. Are you guys listening to me? Come on, let me see some hearts, some likes if you're with me. I hope you're with me. Come on, let me see you on Instagram. Hit those 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 uh, hearts. Everyone out there, come on, 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 on Facebook land, let me see those, those hearts and likes if you're with me, okay? And what's interesting about this is he wanted her to know that her faith, that her faith is what healed her. Come on. Some of you out there need to hear amen and, and throw some hands up and some worship, some praise out there. Amen. Jesus needed her to know that it was her faith that healed her. It wasn't the cloak. It wasn't her touching him. It was the faith, her belief that Jesus was the one that was going to heal. The same faith that Jairus up to this point has also that Jesus is the one that's going to heal his daughter. Now, let's continue reading. All right. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet in the presence of all the people. She told why she had touched him and, and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. What did he say, everybody? Go in peace. You've been healed. Now, now, now remember, here's Jairus. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't just think about Jairus right now. He's going, okay, Jesus. All right, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. My daughter, my daughter, my daughter, don't, don't forget. Okay, cool, hey, she's healed. She, I have the same faith, oh, let's go. Like, my, my daughter's waiting, right? Cool, beans, hey, daughter, peace. See you later, we gotta go. <laughs> How many moms and dads out there know what I'm talking about? Come on, let's go, Jesus, <laughs> let's go, <laughs> right? All right, amen, yeah, I see them coming in, some likes and hearts, yes, Eleanor, see that, yeah. Paulina, divine timing. Man, you wanna talk about the Lord, right? The God, God's timing is perfect. All right, and so let's continue. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, uh-oh, the synagogue leader, and said, your daughter is dead. Oh, no. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Let's pause there, y'all. <sighs> you know, there's people that are well-meaning in our lives. <laughs> I know there's people that are well-meaning in our lives. Uh, family members, friends, uh, church members, people in your small group. Um, you name it. They mean well. But man, when I read that and, I, and they say, don't bother, don't bother Jesus anymore. Your daughter's dead already. Listen, I'm here to encourage you to not listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to people that had dreams but have given up on them. Oh my gosh. I hope, I hope that's for somebody out there right now. That is for you right now. If you've had a dream of, of having a baby, you've had a dream of maybe that baby being a business, uh, that dream of you know, uh, starting in ministry, doing ministry, I don't know, whatever it is, you know, uh, playing an instrument, singing, I don't know what it is. If you have a dream and people have, and you've prayed and you've prayed and you've prayed and you've asked God and you said, God, I want this dream. I want this dream because I want to use it. I want to use my gifts and talents. And you feel like God has not responded yet. And there's people around you that are, their dreams are coming true and, and you feel like you're being left behind and there's people around you that mean well because they don't want to see you broken heart, right? They don't want to see your broken heart. They don't want to see you sad. They don't want to see you go into a pity party or play the victim. They don't want you hurt. They mean well. 
But the worst thing they could tell you is don't bother Jesus anymore. In other words, stop praying. In other words, stop believing. Maybe you've been told your head is in the clouds. Can anybody relate out there? Listen, I want to encourage you and tell you, keep believing. Keep having faith. Keep believing that God is going to respond, that God is going to give you an answer. And again, he's never late. He's never early. He is always on time. You may be ready. Maybe you are ready. But he's preparing other people around you. He's preparing, you know, orchestrating things in the background, right? He's preparing other people that are not ready yet, but he's getting them prepared for when you get blessed. For when your blessing comes, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be powerful. And guess what? It's happened to us where people say, oh, I knew I knew that was going to happen to you. <laughs> oh, I was I was praying for you. <laughs> you know, I, I was right there, man. You know, I, I have you. Oh, yeah, I have you on my prayer list. Right. Pa the Paulina's there. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Go. I see some hearts out on Facebook, on Instagram. Yes. Come on. All right. Oh, I was praying for you. I, I knew Jesus would pull through for you. Yeah. You know, for you, you know, it's just, you know, people lack faith. But I want to encourage you, if you're tuning in, this message is for you. I want you to know that you should be encouraged knowing that that Jairus, I see the faith of Jairus and I see the faith of this woman that for 12 years, 12 years, she was bleeding. She had an illness, but she reached out. She reached out and she knew who to go to. Jairus, now, now think of the parallel there. Let's. Here's another thing that I want to point out to this and, and I hope I hope this is blessing you. The daughter of Jairus is 12 years old and this woman was bleeding for 12 years. Now think about that. That means that Jairus' wife is giving birth to their daughter, right? And this woman, boom, catches this illness, this disease the same year, the same time, around the same time. And for 12 years, they have these parallel lives and they intersect. This is going to, I hope this preaches so much. And it intersects. And Jesus brings these people together. 12 years. And they intersect. And guess what? Jesus is like, I don't have one blessing. I have multiple blessings. Because our God is able, our God is powerful, our God intersects people. He he again he orchestrates all this together. So 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 we don't know. Listen, you don't know what God is orchestrating and preparing right now. Okay, because God God gives us big picture, He gives us vision, He gives us all this with dreams, but He doesn't give us the details. You know why He doesn't give us the details? Because we live. Everybody say it with me. We live by faith, not by sight. That's right. We live by faith and not by sight. Is this blessing to anybody out there? If it is, come on. Let me see some hearts. Let me see some likes. If you're with me, come on. Okay. God intersects people 12 years. Okay. Maybe 12 months, maybe 12 hours. It may be double that i don't know what it'll be but guess what jesus jesus is the way the truth of the life he's the answer he's our hope and we can put we could we could double down on jesus all right hope this is blessing you so while jesus was still speaking someone came from the house of jairus the synagogue leader your daughter's dead he said don't bother a teacher anymore now listen hearing this jesus Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just what? Just believe. Don't be afraid. Just believe and she will be healed. Ladies and gentlemen, church, what does it take? Belief. Belief. Somebody type it in the comments. Come on, if you want to believe up on Instagram, let me see you right now. Post belief. Come on, hang there with me. Say believe. What does it take? Belief. It's faith. It's faith. We live by faith, not by sight. Amen, Paulina. Yes, I see Paulina's on fire. She's with me on Facebook. Yeah. 
Okay? Come on. It takes faith. Jesus said, do not be afraid. Just believe and she will be healed. She will be healed. In other words, your miracle, your dream will come true. Just believe. Believe. God said, you know, Matthew 6, says, seek me first. Seek the kingdom of God first and, and all these things will be given to you. Right? I, I love uh, John. John says, the book of John says, you know, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and the Father will give it to you. Come on. Some of you need to hear that again. Okay? If you remain in me and my words remain in you, this is Jesus speaking. Ask for whatever you wish and the Father will grant it for you. Grant it to you. Let's do it. Let's believe. Let's continue to have faith in Jesus, okay? And continue to have a relationship with him. Not because he's a great uh, gift giver, okay? He's not Santa Claus. It's not because of that. But God wants a relationship with us. And he wants, and he gives us great gifts. Why? Because he's a good father, right? We're not going to treat him like Santa Claus. We want a relationship with the Lord. Why? Because he's a good, good father. He's a good father. We need to believe, okay? Carrie, I believe that I have a job. Amen. Amen. Yes, you do. Believe, Sheila. Yes. Let's believe. Yes. All right, let's continue. 51. We're going to wrap up soon, okay? When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone. Now, here's another key. Don't miss this, okay? D don't log off. This is going to bless you. When he, when Jesus arrived at the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, he did not let anyone go in with him except who? Listen to this. Peter, John, and James. Peter, John, and James, and the father and the mother of the child. Okay? Five people. Peter, James, John, the father and mother of the child. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning outside, right? Probably outside of the room, outside of the house for her. And Jesus said, stop wailing. <laughs> stop crying, right? Stop crying. Yes, Carrie. Yes, in Jesus' name, your marriage is renewed. I believe it and receive it. I'm going to pray right now for Carrie. Everybody, extend a hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Carrie. We're going to stop this program right now. And, and God, you brought Carrie here tonight because you are the resurrection and the life. God, you are the God of creation. So create a new heart, a new mind for her husband and for her. Lord, resurrect you know, this marriage in the name of Jesus, we believe. God, you are, you know, a great physician, but you're also love. So we just pray for love, for joy, for peace. We pray, Lord, for self-control. We pray for all the fruits of the Spirit, F you know, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, uh, and self -con all, the, all the fruits of the Spirit, mighty God. Bless her marriage, resurrected, and she's going to have a marriage that is renewed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, that's what we pray right now. We love you, Carrie. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Believe that. Believe it. All right. So I was go back to what I was saying. Five people were allowed in, right? Peter, John, James. Okay. While everyone else was outside, Jesus said, Stop wailing. Stop crying. Jesus said, She is not dead, but she's asleep. She is not dead, but she's asleep. Okay. Here's the point. Don't miss it. I want you to know that you need to follow the patterns. When you see something that Jesus did, just do it. I'm going to say it again. This is not a Nike commercial, but just do it. <laughs> okay. What did Jesus do? He grabbed Peter, John, and James and, and, his par and the parents of the child because they were faith filled. Listen to this. They believed also, you need to have, here's the point, you need to get a small team, just a small. It could be one person, two people, three people. Uh, if, if, you know, if you're married, you know, you need to have, you know, people that are married, that are solid, that believe in your marriage, that just prayed right now, Carrie, like what I did for you, uh, you know, and, and believe that your marriage is going to get back together, that it's going to be resurrected, uh, that believe in your dream also. You need to surround yourself with people that are faith-filled that believe, that are in God's word, that believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? 
and, and you need to bring them in and pray with those people. So when your faith is a little down, their faith is up and they pick you up. Do you understand that? Your faith may be here, but they're here and they pray, they pray, they pray, they pick you up, they pick you up, they pick you up. And now you're at that level where your your faith together, okay? The scriptures say, you know, where two or more people pray together and believe, okay? Man, they can move mountains. Not only that, but I'm telling you, God responds. And it's not that we're moving his hand, but God sees our faith. Like he see he saw the faith of this woman that, that was ill for 12 years and he saw the faith of Jairus and he said, man, your faith is what's healed you. Your belief in me is what's healed you because you believe in me and you came to me and it was me who you seeked, me who you looked for. I'm the one that you sought for and I've been pursuing you, I've been chasing you and I've been wanting to have a relationship with you and I'll grant this for you. Isn't that amazing? We have a great big God. God is so good. God is so good, okay? And so again, you need to get some people Okay, that's basically my last point. You need to get some people that believe with you, that believe with you in your dream, that believe together, that pray for you, that 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 that'll surround you with their faith also. All right. They laughed at him. Man, anybody ever laughed at you? All right, you have this big dream, you have this audacious, hairy big goal. <laughs> Let me wet my whistle. <laughs> God has given you a dream, a vision. God has given you this thing inside of you where you go, I just, it doesn't let me sleep. I need to accomplish that. I need to do this. I, you know, I, I'm telling you right now, some of you, some of you were laughed at. Some of you, they laughed at you. They said, yeah, right. Good luck. Whatever. Look where you're from. You know, uh, look where you grew up. You know, you grew up on the wrong side of the tracks. You know, you don't have education. How are you going to do that? This and that, blah, blah, blah. All the naysayers, okay? They laughed at you because they saw, listen to this. They saw what was only on the external, but they didn't see what was inside. They didn't see, and not only that, but they didn't know Jesus. They didn't have the faith. See, there's people that say, oh yeah, I believe, I believe. But when it comes down to it and the rubber meets the road, and things get hard, things get tough, right? I'm gonna, one of the great theologians, Mike Tyson, <laughs> Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> He's not a theologian, but I'm just, I'm having some fun with this, okay? So just bear with me. <laughs> everyone has a plan, right? Until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> Once you get punched in the mouth, you know, then you realize how committed you really are, how faith filled you are. That no matter what happens in your life, you're like, you know what? I'm all in. I'm following Jesus. I, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I don't care, you know, hell or high water, hell or high water, whatever happens, you know, COVID-19 and, you know, economic recession or whatever, global recession, whatever happens. Listen, I am laser focused. I am, I got the, the blinders like those racehorses have and all I'm focused is here. I can't look left, I, go, I can look left, look right, but guess what happens? I'm all looking at is the blinders and I'm just focused on Jesus because guess what? Nobody's gonna distract me, nobody's gonna deter me. No one's gonna, no one's gonna turn off my light. No one, no one, no one. And guess what I'm gonna do? If I do open up, it's gonna, I'm gonna open up to people that are filled with faith and people that believe in me, people that believe in my dream and are gonna help me and support me and pray for me. And that's it, okay? And that's what you need to do. And reach out, reach out for Jesus. Reach out for him because he, he's waiting. He's waiting for an opportunity to bless you. He wants to bless you. He wants to have a relationship with you, okay? So they laughed at him knowing that she was dead, but he took her, listen to this, by the hand and said, my child, get up. And he's telling you today, my child, get up. Enough of the self-pity, enough of the victim mentality, enough of the sorrow, enough of the wailing. Enough is enough, enough. Grab my hand, Jesus is saying, grab my hand and believe in me and I 
will take care of the details. You keep believing, you keep dreaming, but I will take care of the details. Just grab my hand and I will take care of all of the details. I'm orchestrating everything around for you because I love you and I want to bless you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that powerful? Her spirit returned and at once she stood up she stood up, then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Of course, you got a grub. <laughs> you know, Jesus wakes you up, you know, boom, because she was asleep. She wasn't dead. Remember, Jesus said, stop wailing. Stop crying. <laughs> stop. Don't even start mourning. Guess what? Because she is asleep. You know, she's falling asleep. Give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, astonished. But he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Isn't that powerful? You see, I'm here to tell you tonight that Jesus wants you to take his hand. And I don't know, maybe you tuned in tonight and, you know, this message was shared, you know, by somebody through Facebook and it wasn't again by mistake. It wasn't by happenstance. You know, I believe in a God that is in control and a god that can even use technology and even use me this this fool to bring a message to you and to tell you that god wants you to take his hand 10 years ago jesus was the only hand that was extended out for me I was at my wit's end. I was broken. I was broke. All my friends had disappeared in the wind financially because um, I was doing well at one point. And you have a lot of friends when you have a lot of money and success. But God allowed all that to disappear. And I'm grateful for it because I was lost. And I didn't know what to do anymore. And before, you know, there would be hands that were extended and I would reach out and people would help me, you know, financially, people would help me with another job or another opportunity and, you know, uh, lend me money, this and that. But I'm so grateful that all those people disappeared in my life. But the one hand that was there that was extended this whole time and I ignored until finally God said, okay, I'll remove all this so you can finally see that my hand has been here the whole time and I'm reaching out to you, Juan. And I just need you to take my hand because I'm ready to give you not only the things that you've dreamed of, but beyond that, I want to bless you. I want to give you peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. That, that drunkenness you use to, to try to sleep. That You can't even find that with that. You know, the, the hit, right? The, the weed that you smoke once in a while. You know, the, the relationship that you've been seeking and that, that doesn't fulfill you, doesn't complete you. The kids that you have, the house, the cars, all that stuff that's material doesn't complete you. He said, grab my hand. Take my hand. I will complete you. I will make you whole. And I will take all your sins away from you. All you have to do is ask. And so right now, where you are right now, you're listening to me, all the voices, uh, all the ears, everyone that's listening to my voice right now, I want you to know that he's telling you right now, take my hand. And so if you wanna take his hand, it's a simple prayer. And it's not the prayer, but it's the faith. It's the belief of the prayer. It's, it's when the mind gets down to the heart and the heart says, yes, I want 
you, Jesus. I want to take your hand. So if you want to do that, let's pray right now. And just pray with me. I don't care where you're at. You just close your eyes as, as long as you're not driving, right? But you can just say this, say, God, I want to take your hand right now. Forgive me for I have sinned against you with my words, with my actions, and even my thoughts. But I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to pay for my sins on that awful cross. And I believe that you resurrected him, that he is alive. And I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Right now, fill me with your Holy Spirit as I take your hand, God. And I want you to be the leader and the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ah, amen, amen, amen. Listen, I prayed that. 18 years ago. But I renewed my relationship with God 10 years ago. And it was the best decision that I ever made. But I mean, what I mean by renewed is I made a commitment to say, you know what? I'm taking your hand, God, and I'm not releasing it, Jesus. And, and I want to grow and I want to have a relationship with you. And I'm committed to do whatever it takes to change my life, to not be the same anymore. And so now that you've made the decision, I want to encourage you to take the next step of your faith journey. And that is, like I just showed you right now in the Bible, you need a Peter, a James, a John. You need other people in your life that can support you, that can, that can be with you, that, can, that, can be, that are faith-filled as you're beginning this journey, this walk with God. You need others that have been walking two, three steps, maybe five steps ahead of you that can tell you, hey, watch out there or watch this or do this and, and, and whatever situation you're in. Listen, I made the commitment and accepted Christ and got baptized by immersion, water immersion, 18 years ago. But where I failed, listen to me, please, because smart, smart people learn from their mistakes, but wise people learn from other people's mistakes. Can I get an amen to that? I didn't surround myself with people that believed, that had faith, that had bigger faith than me. And this is not about faking it till you're making it. This is not it. But it's there's people around you that have walked this journey and have, have seen the pitfalls and have made mistakes because none of us are perfect. Okay, there's no perfect people in the kingdom of God, but we are following the perfect one. And so I want to encourage you to reach out. We have community groups. Okay, you don't need to know the Bible. You don't need to know anything from the Bible. You don't even have to own a Bible. We will mail one to you, but you have to get involved and, and get into a relationship with, like we just read in the Bible right now, right? Jesus went in with Peter, James, and John and the mother and father of the child to go pray because they were the strongest and believed. And Jesus hung out with 12 disciples, but he took in three, his top three. And so I want to encourage you to reach out, private message me. You can, uh, you know, gosh, I always get my phone number out, you know, 661-208-6035. Uh, you can email us at thewellofav at gmail.com. Uh, on Instagram, you can message us you know, through here and say, hey, I'm in. I want to get into a community group. Surround yourself with people that believe in you, believe in your dream, and that are following Jesus. I hope this blessed you. You're a blessing to me. Share the message. Share the wealth. I hope this was, again, a blessing. We love you. Every single one of you that tune in, I want you to know that God loves you. And... I want to invite you, if, if you don't have a home church, to come check us out on Sundays at The Well, right here live. Um, also, we have a platform um, um, 
which I'll put on the in the comments as well. 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 8 p.m. We do stream the services live online. And you can check us out on YouTube also. All of our previous messages, the well of AV. Um, but anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. May you have a good night. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.